As Chief Executive, Tom Davis has a unique relationship with Breakspeare. He's the son of Chairman Michael Davis and represents the fifth generation of Davies to run the family firm, known as Breakspeare after the acquisition of the business of that name in 2006. But he was in no way born into the role, having left university to work as a general manager for Geronimo Inns for a period at Fuller's. His approach has not been to keep the status quo either. Breakspeare returned to the acquisition trail in the summer for the first time in six years and has been very active since then, including partnering up with Michelin star chef Claude Bosi. Speaking to Big Hospitality recently at the Crown Pub in Playhatch near Reading, Davis said the time had been right and there were good sites available. So what ambitions does he have for the Henley-based business? I've got no aspiration to sort of grow it to 500 sites. It's just not. It's, it's it's not what we're about. What I want is 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 a number of of quality pubs. At the moment, we're sitting at 146 pubs. I think it is. And um, in five years' time, we might be the same number. But what I expect is that we will have um, a larger number of better pubs and and and, and fewer of our of our what I call our sort of tail end. So if we stay around the 150 mark, then then I'm happy with that. But I think in in time, I'd like to grow it, but but organically. I don't, I'm not looking at any major acquisitions or anything like that. I'm just sort of what I want is. is is, is a good number of high-quality pubs. Food is a key part of many of the pubs in the purely leased and tenanted company. Claude Bosi aside, a number of lesser-known chefs have opened restaurants in Breakspear pubs, including Ryan Simpson at Orwell's at Shiplake. And Davis encouraged more chefs to look to opening a pub as a way of being able to cook and showcase their own food. It is a great way of doing it. It's, it's, a, it's a relatively inexpensive way of doing it, of setting up your own business. I think that... that um, I suppose it, it, it's slightly fashionable to have fantastic food in a in a, in a rustic pub um, and, and a destination pub at that. So, so I think I think it does work. Um, and, I, and and the benefit to us is that we're in the Thames Valley. It's where a lot of our pubs are, and and, and it's a it's a it's a wealthy part of the part of the country. So. Um, High food prices, which you would need to charge if you're going to have Michelin-star chefs, um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a model that that, that, that does work. And we've had a number who've come to us, and, and, and we work well with them to, to sort of set up their business. Because quite often they're fantastic chefs, um, and they need the backup business support that that, that, that we provide. So, um, so no, it, it does work well, and, and I think it's a, it's a very good um, no, it's, it's a very good low-cost entry for chefs to come into in, in, into the industry. With the acquisition of the Royalist Hotel in Stowe on the Wold, Breakspear has also planted its foot firmly in a rooms business. So will that become more key to the company's other pubs? I think so. We've got about, um, I suppose, about 35 or so of our pubs have rooms currently. And, and it, it's great for the model that the, 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 um, the profits drop straight to the bottom line. And that, and that really helps the operators as, as, as well as us. So, um, yeah, the, the, we bought the, the Star and Eagle down in, um, down in uh, Goudhurst. And that had 10 bedrooms. And it's, it's a good business. And I see us buying pubs with rooms, um, I say slowly over time, but also uh, adding rooms on where possible um, to to, to existing businesses. Davis doesn't rule out taking Breakspeare away from its traditional tenanted lease model and moving into managed houses, and he is clearly open to further acquisitions. Many wannabe operators are looking to acquire, and many experts say now is the perfect time. So how do people go about choosing a good site? Does whether it's food or drink led come into the process, for example? It does. Yeah. What I'm what I'm looking at is is, is long term viability. We're we're a family business. We've been around for a long time and, and, and intend to be around for for a lot longer. So when I'm looking at a site, I'm, I'm thinking about the next generation, two generations down. Actually, will that still be a great site then? And I think um, all the pubs we bought, um, for whatever reason, um, you look at that and say, well, actually, that's a great business. It's a great site, um, and we'll will we'll be great for a long period of time. Um, and I think the, you know, the other thing is, 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 is the, the ability for it to take money. Um, and all the sites we've got have the ability or currently do or will do take over 20 grand a week. And, and I think that, that that's a sort of site that um, we can make good money out of it as well as the operator. And, and that's key. And, that, and keeping our relationships good with our tenants and lessees, um, they've got to be able to make good money out of them. And, 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 and when you get to 20 grand a week circa, um, it, the, the, there's nothing in it for everybody. So, um, so that, that, that's what we're looking at really. As a vocal campaigner on VAT, Davis has seen the industry's many calls for a reduction on that and the beer duty escalator seemingly fall on deaf ears. We asked if he was feeling confident the attitude from government would soon change. Um, not terribly, uh, if I'm absolutely honest. I think that they'll never reduce um, a beer duty from, from where it is now. What, what I think well, the, the best thing we can hope for is, is that they, they, they cap it and they actually stop increasing it. Um, so I think that, that that's what we're now fighting for, um, and, and, and we might get some, some resolve there. Um, I think that the VAT um, club is, is an interesting one, and again, it's going to take a bold government to, to, to sit there and, and cut VAT to the proposed 5%. Um, for um, for food, um, alcoholic beverages, and and uh, and rooms. So, yeah, 
if if you got a, a bold government come in and say you know what actually we will we will do this and and you know the, the experience has shown that uh, that uh, treasury returns actually do increase um, after a period of time because actually employment will be easier and everything else and I think we're getting to the stage in the economy that someone is going to have to stand up and and, and be counted and say actually we, we've got to make some bold moves to get this economy moving and and that's potentially one of them so um, am I optimistic not terribly um, but I do think there's the, there's opportunity for the government to 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 uh, to, to really help um, and it's not just helping us it, it, it's helping youth on unemployment which is which is one of the big problems they're facing at the moment and and, and the hospitality industry does does employ a lot of a lot of young people so um, We'll just have to wait and see. Um, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to bet either way. But I, I, I uh, yeah, I'm not terribly optimistic.